Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, I think she forgot to mention I'm also single. Um, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm going to get kicked off of uh, Slash already. Anyway, what's up, everybody? My name is Benjamin. I'm from Tanzania. It is in East Africa. Does anybody know where Tanzania is? If not, I will show you. Uh, don't worry. We can go through it today together. So this is my home. Uh, this is uh, where I uh, grew up. Actually, this is in East Africa. So the Serengeti uh, is in Tanzania. That's my home. Anyway. That's not my family, uh, this is, but this is where I'm from. This is originally, uh, this is Tanzania. Anyway, so I'm here to tell you about a story about my journey in, in entrepreneurship and how I started the business and why am I even building a company? And it pro you probably are assuming the same thing while seeing me speak right now. Um, anyway, so I grew up in Dar es Salaam, uh, which is in Tanzania. And a British family sponsored my sister and I from K through 12. Uh, and that's the company I'm building. Uh, and this was uh, an eye-opening opportunity because it taught me about grace and favor and started to open up, up opportunities for me that I felt like, as an individual, I never really directly deserved. And a lot of us in this room are maybe products of grace that are still in the process as well, where people have given us opportunities where maybe we felt like, okay, I don't directly deserve this, or somebody who's believing in me. And this is the, one of the first families that believed in me, that gave me this opportunity to go to this international British school in Tanzania. Now, why this comes full circle is, one of the people who was organizing Slush, who invited me here to speak today, also went to, with me to the same school. So it comes back full circle over 15 years later, crazy. Now, as I was going through school, I used to get in a lot of trouble. Uh, I think I hold the record for the most suspensions in my school history. Um, does anybody do the British syllabus, like GCSEs or A-levels? Has anybody done those here? Great. So I want to show you my report card from 11th and 12th grade. This is my report card over here. So if you can look carefully, uh, it says Benjamin Fernandez. It says the school I was going to, and you can see my grades. Geography, C, physics, U, business, E, math, U. Now, in the British syllabus, it's pretty messed up. A U means it's so low below F, that means it's ungraded, right? So basically, you suck. Um, so it's a nice way of telling you that, but in a formal way of not saying you've directly failed. But I failed. And I didn't do well in school. I got in a lot of trouble. Uh, so I sat there at home. I have one sister, what you guys saw earlier. Uh, she's one year older than me, and she was always top of the class. And between our own family, she was the first person in our whole entire family history to go to university. Nobody in my family history has been to university before her. So she had gone to America. Now, obviously, because she's gone, I want to figure out a way, how do I get to, to that place as well? So I you know, try to figure out, you know, I asked a bunch of different schools to let me in, and I got a probationary offer. So then I went to America for the first time at the age of 17. Uh, this is when I was going. Uh, I, the, the, I know I look different, but I forgot my, you know, crown today, but, you know, uh, I, I, it's, it's somewhere. I'm, uh, you know, I'm sure you've all received those emails from an African prince, but that's me. Um, anyway, so I moved to America for the first time. I never lived in America at the age of 17. I was always getting randomly inspected by the police um, at the immigration office all the time. I don't blame them. It's the first time I'm seeing snow um, freezing out here in Helsinki. Anyway, so America gave me an opportunity to really explore what I really wanted to do. But during my time in Korea, I began a career in television, so I used to be a TV host in East Africa. Started hosting on local TV, then went to national TV. Television is what got me into payments. Now, how many of you have heard of M-Pesa, maybe, in this room? So M-Pesa is a large mobile money service that operates across Eastern Africa. Now, in East Africa alone, over $365 billion is transacted on mobile money, which means, like, your cell phone is your bank account. I know. It's sensitive to talk about cell phones in uh, Finland because of what happened in Nokia, but uh, we, can, we can move on. Um, so the joke you tell your friends when you work in the, in, in the industry is when you don't know what to do with your life, you go to business school. So uh, at the age of uh, 20, I got accepted to Stanford for business school. Um, it was the, during the MBA program. So this is my first day on campus. I had to bring some African vibes. Um, and during my time there at Stanford, I got to meet a lot of different people who are working in technology. And it started to really open my eyes because as, as an individual, I never thought I'd be starting a tech company. I never thought I'd be getting involved in, in doing some things like that. But a lot of my classmates would really push me because I was really curious about the payment space on a global scale. Like, Benji, why don't you build this company? So that's what motivated me to go and start Nala. And so after I finished at Stanford, I went out to work at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Um, I was working in the payments team. So I was looking at payments across Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, uh, and sorry, Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, not in Rwanda, uh, Nigeria and Ghana. So during that experience, uh, what I started to learn was the payments ecosystem globally is growing, but across Africa, it's still massively broken. 
uh, there's a massive opportunity for us to build many things. I spent a lot of time in the field interviewing many, many different people to try to understand what are the pain points people are facing in the payments ecosystem and the space over there. And this is how I began looking at Nala. Across the world, $61 billion was sent to Africa, and over $4.8 billion was lost in fees. Africa is the most expensive continent in the world to send money to, and it's also the lowest income region in the world, so it shouldn't be this way. So the big question I should ask myself is, what can we do to reduce the cost of sending money or trading with the continent, right? It's the most expensive region in the world to trade with, and because there's so many barriers to entry, the trade costs will still remain high. So what does this look like in the future? How do other companies, for example, today we have a world of creators on TikTok. Those creators in Africa, while they make amazing content, can't get paid into their mobile money wallets because they don't have credit cards or debit cards. They have mobile money wallets, and TikTok doesn't pay out to those wallets today. Right? So who's enabling that environment for all these large uh, organizations or businesses that are trying to trade in and out of Africa to make those payments? So when we started Nala, we initially right now we support the UK and the US. We enable people to send money to five countries across the African continent. Um, and in the past year, we raised $10 million. Uh, we're backed by Excel. Uh, we're one of the Excel's largest investments um, uh, on the continent, uh, as well as Bessemer. Uh, and the many angels who are actually here with us today in, 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 at Slush, such as Alex from Deal, uh, Vlad, the founder of Robinhood in the US. Uh, these are all some of our investors who have backed us. But we have a lot of responsibility of things that we want to get done. The continent is really big, but it's also very complicated. It's very complex. The continent holds 1.3 billion people today. In 2022 alone, 41 million people left the African continent for opportunities in Europe, the US, the UK, um, and many more migrants are, are, are starting to grow and more. Africa is a very talented continent, but the opportunities don't always exist to everybody who is there. Personally, this has been my journey. I started the company because I believe that many people should not be paying these high exorbitant fees to transact and trade with the region I really care about. Now, as we look at payments across the world, in Finland or in the UK, maybe you can send transfers for free, you can make trades for free. That isn't the case with many different regions around the world. And so as we were building Nala, we started to ask ourselves, what does winning look like? What does success look like? A hundred years from today, we're trying to build the rails for greatness where many different companies can trade across the rails that we're building on the ground. Across Tanzania today, Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, Ghana are the markets we currently operate in on the African continent, but we're seeing how can we scale up uh, and manage more and more regions in the, in the market. In the last year, we grew 800% in our payment volume from January till today. We've grown up our team from seven people to nearly 70 people today as we speak. We just hired two more this morning. Uh, and so the team is growing, uh, quite a bit of work to do. Uh, but I'm not here to give a pitch. I'm here to just tell you about our journey and why I started the company. Anyway, Payments in Africa, 1% built. My name is Benjamin Fernandez. Thank you so much for listening to me today. Cheers. Bye-bye. Oh, and uh, let your friends know I'm single. All right, see ya. Bye-bye. <laughs>